I am back, YouTube, finally. It's been a long time, at least it has for this project. It's been since August since I last posted a video, which is still kind of long, honestly. It needs to be sooner and more often, but that's okay. I am here now and things are gonna start changing. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, with uh, video uploading and that's where we're at. I mean, I am in this house now, finally. Yeah. We're here, we're finally here. E30, finally, finally, finally dug it out of storage. It's been in storage since April, which is way too long. And even then, before that, it's not like much happened. That was January, I believe. I'm pretty sure that was January when we pulled that. I've gotten a couple things. Obviously, I did the trans video. Um, got the wheels, which are under here, all covered with a moving blanket because just what happened. <laughs> Tools are disaster. We're just working with it and going where we, going with what we have. And I need to organize things still. Things are a mess. I need to build a weld table. I have the tabletop underneath all this crap. So build a welding table, start building parts on it, which would be really cool. I finally, finally got this here though. And that's what we're here for, the K-swapped E30 with the BMW ZF Trans. Classic styling, classic really rusty styling. Needs to get cleaned up. This whole car is a This is my adapter plate. This is what I built. And uh, I'm in Fusion 360. Amazing program, I love it. It's awesome, free to use for personal non, or personal non-commercial use. Super nice, very awesome for a hobbyist like me and you, which awesome. So here is my adapter plate. You can see these recessed bolts. These are my engine mount bolts, actually. These will bolt to my engine. This will bolt to my K-series. If you were to look, I actually have the 3D scan of the Honda uh, five-speed that I was talking about right here. So you can see I actually went through, if I'm to hide the mesh, you can see I have all these bolt holes all around. I'm able to go through it and use what will work with this adapter plate. Um, it's really cool. I, I Anyone can do this if you know how to run a CAD program. I'm, I'm self-taught, you know, you can use YouTube. You're on YouTube right now, you use YouTube. You can learn pretty much anything if you take the time to do it. So what I have here is the whole bolt pattern of all of my uh, bolt holes that will bolt up to my engine. So by uh, doing that, I was able to come up with the shaft center, which if I was to show you that mesh again, you can see this shaft center, which is really nice because that gives me that my very center point. And I've actually measured this. I actually went through with my caliper here and uh, measured every bolt hole and made sure everything lines up exactly so it will work uh, from here to here, from here to here, or from here to here. I've measured all these bolt holes, making sure they're all within the same zone and they all line up like they're supposed to. Nice thing of a 3D scan, especially one that's very well done. This one's a very nice scan. Um, it's super helpful that I got that. But then we have my adapter plate. Now, you can see I have smaller holes. These smaller holes will allow me to adapt the, I'll be tapping these for my bolts that will travel from the transmission to the adapter plate because the adapter plate won't, or the bolts to the transmission won't bolt to the engine. They have to bolt to the adapter plate and then the adapter plates adapt to the engine. So we were able to do that and I was able to find the center point of everything. And uh, we have our hole cut out for our rain gear and flywheel. And we have our hole cut out for our starter motor to match the Honda starter motor size. And then right here, it's missing a hole. I'm, I was just going to do that by hand. I didn't want to take the time <laughs> right now. I'll be changing this model once I do it. 
This is just where we're at right now with this drawing. But I'll take this drawing and I'll put the hole for the dowel pin that goes there. That's the dowel pin that sits on the transmission. You, you want to use dowel pins with, with your adapters. If you don't use dowel pins, things don't line up. So this is why you use them. But it was very helpful. The guy's name that I got this got the adapter, uh, or the the flange drawing from was named BD. You can find his blog online. Um, I'll link it to the video if you guys are ever interested, because he deserves credit. And uh, yeah, and I'll link the Honda Trans. Let's see where can I find that file. Um, Insert a DXF. So this, if I select that plane, I have his adapter flange, and this is all free. Like he threw it up on his blog for anyone to download. Same with the Honda scan, the Honda transmission scan. But he's drawn this whole thing up for his off-roading team because they use it as a mud scatter shield, basically. Keep mud from going into their bell housing. But this is super helpful because it had the, the bolt holes and everything. And uh, I was able to make that work with what I needed to. So it gave me my all my bolt holes. And as I did with the Honda, I checked all of my holes. So what I'm doing right here, right there, I am milling out of particle board because aluminum's expensive and uh, we're gonna get our test piece so we can base everything off of that. And if that fits, we are good. So this is what we're doing. Just slowly but surely getting our holes milled in there. And we'll go off of that and then uh, you'll see the shape here in a second. milled out ready for me to test looks good I think it'll fit it looks right so fingers crossed well there we are didn't show any uh, of me getting that off that stand it wasn't pretty <laughs> I still have yet to get myself an engine hoist but I'd say that's a success I only had to make a couple changes get out of here Get out of here, we don't need you no more. Bye. <laughs> well, now we got room.
one, front, foot, fender, well, yeah, cool. Woo! I, uh, I actually measured both frame rails and made sure they cross measure perfectly square. So we're good this way, this way, and then from this corner to that closest uh, strut nut, and same. I mean, we're perfectly aligned. I think we got lucky. This car had some damage from an accident, I could tell. Obviously, you could see it on the, on the front corner there. It's got all this rust from all the paint chipping off and then no one addressing it, and they just kind of for some reason didn't bother fixing it all the way, I guess, but uh, I measured everything and we are now square. So right on, that's what I like seeing. It's finally here, it's done. My adapter, my uh, K to ZF five speed adapter is done. I finally milled out a little aluminum. <laughs> Got a big old plate over here that I machined it out of. And now we're here. Exciting, exciting. I, it seems like it's going to fit so far from me just test fitting. You excited for the day this runs? Oh yeah, you gotta turn on those beats, huh? What do you think? Yeah. I am back again. It's time to clean this E30's engine bay out. It's a really filth, filthy, filthy mess. Really greasy. This subframe is literally just covering grease. I'm just put some Dawn dish soap because that's all I got. <laughs> I thought about, uh, I should have probably got some simple green or something. But we're gonna just uh, pressure wash this engine bay and then that. But yeah, uh, I'll bring you on for the ride, I guess. for the trans, there's my son just playing in the E30. Okay, we are ready to drop this pan and uh, get that oil pump off so we can actually see how everything winds up. We'll bolt up the trans, we'll throw it inside. All right, let's see, what do we got going on here? Looks pretty good. I mean, as far as I can see, I don't see any damage. bolts up though you'll see I have to clearance right over here once I get a starter for this I have to clearance the, the bell housing right here 
to uh, put the starter, but that's about it. It's pretty typical if you've seen anyone do these BMW ZFs in a K-Series setup. You'll see that's pretty normal. There we are. Let's see. It's probably about where I want it to sit. I would come up with some engine mounts, modify it to work with this chassis, and I change some things around, kind of play around with it. I need to get a better idea of how I want to sit that and we'll just see. We'll see. And see, I've wedged like the AC bracket under there for now. Prefer to have a little bit more height than that. So I might come up just a little bit more. But ideally, as low as I can come. And the same with the transmission. I'd like to get it. Well, I'd like to get the transmission as high as I can go, and I'd like to get the engine as low as I can, so now we'll get a level on here, kind of play with it, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at. But I'd say we got a K-Series and an E30-ish, <laughs> at least the beginning. But if you like what you see, uh, like, comment, subscribe. And, you know, I, I mean, that's the typical YouTube thing to say, I guess. So uh, I'd like to uh, continue making this happen for you guys. I know it's been a long time. I've been talking about it for a while and things have not been forgotten. There's a lot of work here to be done and I need to get like things kind of out of the way and we're making some progress. That's, that's what matters. So yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can make some mounts next and uh, we'll go from there.